glorify you this morning. We thank you that you are not a God that you should lie. We thank you for your promises. For they are yea and amen, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. We exalt you, O oh God. Be thou lifted high in this place, O oh God. For you are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Shammah. You are Jehovah Nisi. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are the El Shaddai. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last, O oh God. Every knee shall bow before you and every tongue shall confess that you are Lord. We declare that you are Lord in this place. We declare that you are Lord over our lives this morning. Oh God Almighty, as we come, we come with an attitude of praise, an attitude of worship unto you, mighty God. Lord, I pray, God Almighty, that your Holy Spirit will fall afresh upon us, oh God. We need a fresh touch this morning from our head to the sole of our feet, oh God. We need you, oh God. We need you today. Yesterday's blessing is gone. Today is a new day, Father God, that you woke us up this morning. You clothe us, oh God, in our right minds, oh God. And we thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Oh God Almighty, be thou glorified. Be thou lifted high this morning. Oh God, I thank you for the musicians this morning. I thank you, Father God, for those, oh God, on the song system. I thank you, God, for the camera. I thank you for Judah, Lord, that as we go up before you this morning, we are all Judah, we are all worshippers. You have called us to worship. And as we go up before you this morning, God, I pray that our minds will be stayed upon you, Lord. I pray, Father God, that our eyes will stay focused upon you, Father. That you will move, Father God, in a mighty way. That you will move, Father God, from the pulpit to the pews. From every chair, every corner, Father God, of this place will be covered. And that your spirit will move in our midst this morning. We thank you for what you're about to do, God. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Hallelujah. 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 Thank Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We worship you, Almighty God. For you deserve the glory. You deserve the honor. You deserve the praise. Thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. We thank you for what you have started to do, O oh God. And as we come corporately to worship you, Father, that what we have done during the week, O oh God, will manifest, O oh God, in a higher way, Father God, in this place. Thank you, Jesus. For those on their way, God, I pray to you in mercy. I pray that you hasten the steps into your house. And as they come, Lord, they will come with an attitude of expectation. In the mighty name of Jesus, be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Be thou glorified. Be thou lifted high. Hallelujah. For you created us to worship you. You created us to worship you. You created us to worship you. Because we know we have an anchor. We have an anchor in Jesus. He is our solid rock. He is our firm foundation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We have an anchor in the Jesus. Hallelujah. Steadfast and sure. While the billows roll, fastened to the rock, which cannot move. Grounded, firm and deep. In the Savior's love. Hallelujah. How many of you know that you have an anchor in Jesus? Amen. You have to believe it. Amen. Let's clap our hands.
in that Savior's love. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong tides live and the cables strain, will your anchor train on Oh! 
Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Making it personal this morning. Hallelujah. I have an anchor that keeps my soul. Yes. Hallelujah. Jesus, the solid rock on which I stand, fastened to the rock, which is Jesus, that cannot move, grounded, firm and deep in the Savior's love. My God, hallelujah, my God, my God, hallelujah, my God, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. What amazing God, what amazing God, what amazing God. You are so amazing God. Thank you Jesus. You are so amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing God. Jesus, we are here to worship you God. We are here to give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mighty God, mighty God, mighty God. Lord, we look to you this morning. And not to no one else, oh God. All help comes from you, Jesus. Mighty God, hallelujah. There is no other God beside you. There is no other God like unto you, Jesus. Hallelujah, because you were not created by human hands. We thank you, God Almighty, that we worship you. We worship you, God. Spirit of the living God. Jesus. Thank you, God. You are not a God who is dependent on any mortal man. You are not a God in need of anything that we can give. Because we know that you are God and that's just the way it is. No matter what people say, that is just the way it is, that he is God. That is the way it is and that is the way it's going to be. Hallelujah. No matter what, no matter what they come your way, that's the way it is. He is God. Trust him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
God. He's unshakable. He's unstoppable. Nothing can stop my God. That is who he is this morning. That is who he is this morning. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Mighty God. Hallelujah.
bless the Lord this morning. Why don't you lift up holy hands and give him praise, give him thanks. Hallelujah. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are my God. You are all together lovely. All together worthy. All together wonderful to me. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Let us pray. But before I pray, I want to read to you a passage of scripture this morning. Luke 17 from verse 15 to 37. It said, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance because according to the Leviticus law 300 feet is the distance away from leprosy people people who have that disease in verse 13 it said and they called out a loud voice because of the distance Jesus have pity on me verse 14 said when he saw them he said go show yourself to the priests as they went, they were cleansed. Verse 15 said, one of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. And the Bible said he was a Sumerian. Jesus then asked the question, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your fate has made you well. The question, has anyone have a praiseworthy thanksgiving this morning for Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. Has anyone? Where are the nine? Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, holy is your name. You are worthy, mighty God, of all glory, honor, majesty, and praise. This morning, Father God, we declare that you are our Father, the Alpha and the Omega, the Ancient of Days. Creator, the Lord who provides, the Lord who heals, the God who sees, the Good Shepherd. You are wonderful, Counselor, the Prince of Peace. This morning we recognize and we confess that you are God eternal. You are loving, you are unchanging, holy, gracious. You are sovereign God, the self-existent, the self-sufficient God. And this morning... Hallelujah, as a community of your people, oh God, who you have called, set apart. Lord, we offer up praise and thanksgiving unto you this morning for all of your goodness, all of your loving kindness, your unending love. You are King of Kings, Lord of Lords. We stand this morning, God, in awe of your mighty works in our midst among us. We stand in awe, God, of your creativity, the wonders, O oh Father God, of your mighty word. With the word, you created the universe. And it's only by you that our world is upheld. Therefore, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah. For all that you have done in our lives. Thank you that when we follow you, we come under your kingship. We bow now before you today and we confess that you are Lord of our lives. May your rule and may your, may your kingdom come into our lives, Lord God, and occupy, Lord, our lives in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you this morning to fill us with joy, with the peace, Lord, with the peace that comes from above, the peace that does not depend on our circumstances and our need, Lord, but the peace of God which passes all 
all human understanding. Apply to our heart this morning. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. This morning, Father God, we are reminded from your word to always be thankful. Hallelujah. That regardless of our circumstances, regardless of our position, Lord God, you have done so many things in our lives, so many goodness when we reflect and remember in the past where you have brought us from. How can we withhold our voice? How can we withhold ourselves, Lord God, from magnifying you and give you thanks? Lord, we don't want the stones to rise up and give thanks to you. So therefore, let us as your people this morning, God, open up our mouth in, in an attitude of praise and in thanksgiving, Lord, and worship you in the beauty of holiness. You are good to us. You have demonstrated, God, your love towards us in so many ways, God. You forgive us of all our sins and your word assures us that you hear us when we cry out to you and you respond to us according to your word. Thank you, Father, for listening to us this morning. You favor us and you provide all that we need every day. You are the one who is guiding us. You create lever parts for our feet, Lord. Glory to God. And you keep us stable, founded upon the rock, which is Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Because God, we come this morning and we thank you because you are our healer. You heal our bodies. You mend every brokenness in our lives. And you put us back together again because you are our creator. And you know, oh God, have issues in our lives, oh Father. And so, Father, we turn our hearts and our eyes upon you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, help us to understand that as we operate in the kingdom of Almighty God, you grant us grace. Oh, hallelujah. You grant us grace for every situation, every need in our lives, Lord God. You grant us grace and you grant us strength. Oh God, to endure, we might not, Father, receive all that we ask immediately, but understanding, God, that it's a process, and your purpose, Lord, must be fulfilled in our lives. So help us, oh God, to endure the process. In due time, your word assures us, the hope of your word assures us, God, that in due time, you will work out all things for our good. You will work out all things in our favor. And so this morning, Father, with uplifted hands and with praise and shouting in our mouth, Lord God, at your command, Lord, you said to the lepers, go show yourself to the priest and your word declare as they, uh, as they turn, O oh God, to report to the priest, Lord, your word declare that they were healed and won. We turn. Filled with emotion and thanksgiving and praise and gratitude. Hallelujah. Bow before you in praise and in thanksgiving. Lord, this morning I believe, God, you're at, you're looking for a people, oh God, who is grateful. I believe this morning, Father God, you're looking for a people, oh Father, who will prostrate before you, God, in gratitude in thanksgiving, God, for your goodness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Help us this morning as your people now to look through the eyes of faith and see your goodness. Look through the eyes of faith and see possibilities. Look through the eyes of faith and see our deliverance, our healing, our victory in every year of our lives, oh Father. Your word this morning is speaking to us. Let your word guard our heart and anchor our soul in you this morning so that we become a people, Lord God, a people Oh, Father, those who know their God and understand that the people who know their God will do a great exploit in the earth regardless of their plight, regardless of our circumstances because we know the God in whom we serve. And this morning, Father, we pray that you will rest your mighty great hand upon us this morning, Father, and draw us to yourself in the name of Jesus. We come and we offer up, Lord God, praise. 
praise worthy worthy to our king of king and lord of lord we offer up thanksgiving god worthy worthy to our god in the name of jesus 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 so you're asking the question is there any is there any who have some things to be thankful for lord i confess that i'm grateful i'm thankful oh god for your blessings upon our lives for forgiveness of our sins and for cleansing for all unrighteousness and now lord we have this great and awesome privilege whereby we can come boldly into your throne of grace and we can cry abba father because indeed you are our father who provides all that we need in jesus name in Jesus' name, we come and we submit and we surrender all to you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whatever he is to you today, whatever Jehovah is to you today, your healer, your provider, your protector, your peace, Yes. Whatever he is to you today, declare it by faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are Jehovah. You are Jehovah. You are my peace. You are my rock. You are my strength. Hallelujah. Father God, we come by faith. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. 
60 seconds out uh, be like that leper who was healed but return to give him thanks. I don't know what he have done for you for the past week, for the past month, what he have done for you for so far this year. But even in anticipation of what he's going to do for you, will you take 60 seconds and just bless him this morning? Give him the fruits of your lips. Will you magnify his name? God, you're worthy. You are Jehovah, the one who is able, the great warrior, the one who is able to subdue every situation, put everything under our feet. We bless you. Father and God, there is no situation that is above your name. Your name is the highest. Your name is the greatest. Your name stands above it all. So we bless you this morning. We exalt your name, King Jesus. We lift you up on high. We declare that you alone are worthy. You're worthy of all our praise. You're worthy to be lifted up. You're worthy to be magnified. We in this house this morning, we let the praises of God go up. In this house this morning, uh, we render hallelujah and uh, shout back to your mighty name. Uh, hallelujah. With the lifting of the voice, uh, with the clapping of the hands, uh, with a shout this morning, uh, we bless the name of the Lord. Uh, will somebody this morning uh, shout with a voice of triumph? Uh, Jehovah is his name. Uh, will somebody bless the Lord today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. to give God thanks for. Will you just love on three persons this month? Tell them I got something to give God thanks for. Hallelujah. shout for the Lord today. Is there anyone this morning in this house? I can declare I got something to give God thanks in spite of the Lord this morning for his goodness and for his faithfulness today. There is no God like our God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Did someone smile at you yet for the morning? Somebody say good morning to you. Good morning. There's no place I'd rather be today than to be in the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We welcome all of you this morning into the sanctuary. And those who have joined us online, wherever you're joining from, we welcome you this morning in your Father's house. Amen. You may be seated in his presence at this time. We'll invite Brother Nick to come and share his testimony at this time as he comes. Thank you, Judah.
Yes, Lord. There's power in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Whoa. Satan, you're in trouble today. The Bible talks about fear 365 times. Second Timothy is one of my favorite. One and seven. But I want you to understand, I'm going to, in the year 2016, I was homeless. Going through my stuff, so depressed, so stressed, and everything. In that process, I met my wife. When I met my wife, she was like a comfort zone where God sent like a saving angel. It comes that I get my older son, so I have to find something where to stay. I use Progress as a good name at the base there. They told me I'm having a job lining up, so here wouldn't be the best place for me. A lot of people don't know because I don't really say, here wouldn't be the best place for me. You get in a job and here I have a curfew at six o'clock. I will send you down to the leader motel, they have a plan. I went down there, I was at the bottom. At the time, my wife turned to me and said, I will not interfere with what God doing to you. I feel in myself, I feel down because I'm like, I need help. But I understand because it comes to a point where I learned for what God is doing in my life. I will reap and have my strength and my power. So going to the Lido, I get there. I look over there, Sister Irma is not here. She saw me in the back and she said, Brother Nikar, I saw the way you come into church. And I felt it in my spirit that something is off. Something is wrong. But I'm going to lift you up in prayer. And I want you to continue to keep trusting God. Because things will work in your favor. Just remember that part. Things will work in your favor. I say thank you. I went on and God speaking to me. I start to walk and God is speaking to me. And I felt it. And I go and I, God said, don't do this. And I still, and I'm like, I'm trying to be good. And I go, to just in the case, I'm trying to be good. But it wasn't of God, no matter how good it looks. I go and I come back to church and <laughs> mother does greet me at the door she said you know when God talked to you you should listen I, I was scared because this now is coming to me like a flood she said God showed you things and God talked to you you need to listen it already passed and it's behind you but remember weeping may endure for the night but joy come in the morning and she hugged me and kissed me on my cheek and said, God bless you. I elevate and I, six months, I stay at the leader motel. They call me and she's like, oh, Nicarno, it's like God must on your side. I have, a, I have a place for you, which is downtown. I go downtown, I got a job, another job, so that's two jobs now. And while I'm there, the job is so far away around, it's take me, hours in the morning to go. So I cut through the trail. I have a small flashlight. I cut through the trail and I, four, five, five o'clock in the morning, I'm supposed to start work. So I have to leave like from three something to go. And I cut through the trail for three months with that flashlight. The flashlight, it made me take up that side. But when I'm walking, it's like there. And I say, God, you shine a light for me to see my path. 
he goes, and I come, and I said, Lord, he start to elevate me. I start to get another job now. So that's my third job, working at Marriott St. Regis Hotel. And I go there and I start work. When COVID hit and I'm home, I start to feel a lot of pain. And this is, this is still going on, but God is doing something. I start to feel a lot of pain in my heart. Sometimes I hold my phone and it dropped. <laughs> I say, God, I don't know what it is. I go to use the washroom, I can't get up. And I'm fighting with demons. I'm not talking demons that you watch something and see. I'm talking about demons that come to kill, steal, and destroy. But in my dreams, I'm fighting. And I said, I can't do this in my strength. I said, Jesus. And they shadow. And I consented the seat and I spoke to my wife about it. And then I prayed. And God said, my son, you should never leave my side. The moment you leave my side, you give your enemy the power over you. I'm encouraging any one of us to stay with God because God is the source. Down there, he said, it's not how the beginning looks. Or the middle maybe so rocky, but he will be there for me at the end. And I said, Lord, I have something to worship you for. I have something to praise you for, to sing for. So COVID passed. I'm still going through the pain. And COVID, it's like a lot. So the Lord said, Nick. I'm going to put you in a strange situation <laughs> of, all, of all this pain. I can't. They're in construction. It's a, t- it's, a, it's a tough job. I'm going to put you into a place where it's going to be uncomfortable, but I got you. I got offer a job, very great job. Big decision because I love cooking and everything. I don't give it up. I still do it. I go into construction, my car break down, my car start to have problem, my this, I say, God, you tell me I'm gonna have this job, how I'm going through this. Suddenly, I start to take Uber to the work. I go to the work and up to this day, I'm not lift nothing heavy, I'm not doing nothing heptic to irritate me, they nominate me as the health and safety rep. I get in a course to do the health and safety for the whole entire company. And I'm there and I go in and I say, God, he showed me this is a difficult task, but he having me going through this process because he know my needs. The car break down and all of that. As you can see, I'm driving a, a newer car. <laughs> So I give God thanks for that and everything. But Pastor, just spare me because this is where it sum up. Sister Irma, it's a blessing to my life and Mother Dows. So in my sense, I don't write a book. I wrote songs. And God has blessed me with one, so I just please. Please that to you. People talking about me, and they say that I'm changing. I am changing. They keep talking and saying that I'm not the man. gotta believe you really just gotta believe oh, the things will work in my favor I gotta believe I just gotta
possibly I'm not chasing dreams nor vanity I'm trying to find my soul Love is the answer Believe is the key To open every door oh, oh, oh. Things will work in your favor And you just gotta believe you really just got to believe The things will work in your favor You got to believe You just got to believe And I know you've been You've been going through And you don't know what to do Weeping and door for a night, but joy comes in the morning. My life is the greatest thing I've owned. Yeah, yeah, smile, just smile, please smile while just smile. for you come and smile smile will somebody smile today will you give somebody a smile today come on let's put our hands together again for our brother Nick I know God has a purpose for your life brother Nick you know that song I believe this is the avenue for your next. God has given you a gift for your next brother. Would you stretch your hands? I just sense we just pray for that breakthrough for him. Father, in the name of Jesus, you have gifted him with this grace to sing and right, I pray, Father and God, it will be the vehicle that you will use to take him and his family to the next level. Let 2024 be the year of breakout for them. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You, you, you know that song was written out of an experience. It has songs that are just written, but when a song is written from an experience, you, you sense it in your spirit. Amen? Well, let's worship the Lord in giving this morning. Praise God. We thank God for the opportunity to partner with him in giving, uh, knowing that it is true or given. That's one of the areas we are tested in our faithfulness and in our worship. Our acceptable worship before God is given is one of the areas 
It doesn't matter how much we may say we love God, but if we never give to the Lord, it means there is something is wrong. Amen? So we encourage you this morning to give faithfully as the Lord has blessed you, as he has prospered you. We want to remind you as you give of your tithes and offering, also remember of your first, um, um, your seed offering. Um, as we continue to pay down the debt of our uh, church right here, uh, we encourage you to continue. Our goal this year is to pay down $10,000. So we encourage you to give monthly into the stewardship campaign to pay down for this debt. Here are the ways in which you can give. As they saw this one reminded also on the outside you have debit services if you need debit services someone is on the outside who can assist you that if you need an envelope just lift your hands and um, one of the ushers can assist you just lift your hands if you need an envelope and someone can assist you with that let us stand at this time as we go before the lord in prayer father we thank you today for the opportunity to partner with you in giving into the kingdom we pray as your people give today that god they will give willingly they will give a father and god with a sense that you are their provider you are their source and i pray father will not give grudgingly but will give willingly today knowing that you loveth a cheerful giver bless your people bless every household today bless those who are online who are participating in the giving i pray in jesus name amen remain standing as the ushers direct you as you come this time to give
it's time for the word. Just remain standing. This morning we want to do something probably a little different. We want to read the entire passage of scripture from the book of Hebrews 11. We're talking about faith, right? How does faith come? Hearing what? The word of God. So let us call Sister Octavia um, Brooks. She's going to come and she's going to read Hebrews chapter 11 for us. And then I'll return with the word. Let's make her feel welcome. You haven't been up here in a, in a long time. <laughs> okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, morning. As Pastor said, we will be reading um, Hebrews 11, 1 to 40. Um, I pray that as we read this passage that you will be blessed. I was so blessed while I was reading it. Um, I pray that your faith will elevate as we read this, the, this scripture. All right. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and through it he, he being dead still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken away, so that he did not see death, and was not found, because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony, that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah herself also received strength to conceive seed, and she bore a child when she was past the age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, in innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were assured of them, embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind the country from which they had come out, they would have the opportunity to return. But now they desire a better, that is, a heavenly country. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, and he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, was, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, in Isaac your seed shall be called concluding that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from which he also received him in a figurative sense. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each one of the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, jo Joseph, when he was dying, made mention of the departure of the children of Israel and gave instructions concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hidden three months by his parents because they saw he was a beautiful child and they were not afraid of the king's command. By faith, 
when Moses, um, by faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he looked to the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he who destroyed the first should touch them, firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell you of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, Whose faith, who, who through faith, sorry, of subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the, mouth, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness, ne, weakness were made strong, became villain um, in battle, turned the flight, the armies of the aliens, women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trials of mocking and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not yet worthy. They, wan they wandered in deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all, and all these, obta having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. They're ending the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Wow. God has something better for us. Do you believe that today? That's what the word says. By faith. And it begin to list all of the heroes of faith. And what they have received in their journey. And this morning we want to continue from where we left off um, last week. Last week we talked about the description of faith. The description of faith. And we want to continue this week talking about the demonstration of faith. We talk about um, Hebrews and his division. It talks about the superiority of um, Jesus according to Hebrews chapter um, 1 and move to chapter 6 we see of the superiority of Jesus then we see of the superiority of the priesthood that uh, Jesus came to bring and then from chapter 11 to 13 he talks about the superiority of faith the superiority of faith and this morning we want to continue in this journey we're going to focus on Abel, but before we focus on, um, on Abel today and talk about the worship of faith. So Abel speaks of the worship of faith. And then we see in, in, in verses 5 and 6, it's talk about Enoch, and that is the walk of faith. So Abel, the worship of faith. Enoch, the walk of faith. In verses 7, talk about Noah and that is the working of faith so we know he did work to his hand build the ark then we have the patriarchs the patriarchs and that is the waiting of faith 
And that is from verse 11 to 22 as described all of the patriarchs there. And then we see Moses, Moses, the warring of faith, the warring of faith. We had Joshua and Rahab, Joshua and Rahab, the winning of faith, the winning of faith. And then we have various heroes of faith to close out the chapter. Even as, and we will look at each of them on their own um, context, but let me ensure us as we talk about the worship of faith today, one of the things that stood out with me here, especially when it comes to Abraham, is faith requires us to leave. Is the leaving, the living, and the looking. Sometimes we like to play it safe. If we are not sure, we don't know how to move. When it comes to Moses, so faith will bring us out, faith will take us through, and faith will also bring us in. So this morning, let's talk about Abel, the worship of faith. All of us this morning can worship as Abel did, the way God desires for us to worship. We can worship either like Abel or we can worship like Cain. Do you know both of them worship? It was not only Abel who worshiped, but both Abel and Cain worship. It is important for us to understand, as we read the scripture, it says, verse 4, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Cain also worshiped. It's through his sacrifice, and that word sacrifice here is talking about the offering of worship, what we gave unto the Lord. To which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift. And through it he being dead still speaks. And to get the background of this um, passage, you have to go to Genesis chapter 4, from verse 1 to verse 10, Genesis chapter 4, to, from verse 1 to verse 10, where we'll see this passage of scripture is talked about. Let me read, talk about the definition of faith. I gave it to you last week. I want to give it again to you. Faith is believing in the character of God and then acting accordingly. It's believing in the character of God and acting accordingly. So it means faith is hearing. It's believing and acting on the word of Almighty God. So you hear it, you believe it, and you then act on the word of God. So when we talk about the worship of faith, first thing I want to share with you this morning based on the passage we read today is God accept our acceptable worship. God accepts our acceptable worship. I begin to ponder on that when I glean that both of these men worship. But sometimes we may think our worship is acceptable when God is the one who looks at it and he says, mm, this is not. If you want to understand what life is all about, then you must understand true worship. True worship. True worship answers the question, why am I here? In Mark chapter 12, verse 30, it says, Love the Lord with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's what it is. It's to give God all. Acceptable worship is important. When we see the text, we see Cain was worshiping. Cain was also sacrificing. His worship was costing him something. Cain was even offer, offering sacrifice, watch this, to the one true God. It wasn't that Abel was offering sacrifice to the one true God and Cain was offering sacrifice to someone else. They were both offering sacrifices to the one true God. Yet God did not accept the sacrifice that Cain 
was offering. What was the difference? Is the difference that make them acceptable, it was faith. Faith makes the difference, my friend. Faith is how Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice. So I begin to think of this. How much know that God has a pattern for everything? God is a God of order. These guys didn't just stumble upon worship. They had to be an established pattern already put in place on worship. We see a place of worship. I want to encourage us this morning in each of us lives, worship is important. Some place in your life have to be sacred. Are you with me? There's a reason why we consider the house, this way we gather, a sacred place. Even before you were born, your parents, your grandparents, your great-grandparents, generations before, consider a house of God as a sacred place. Are you with me? Consider a place set aside for worship. In our own homes, there ought to be a place where we can be set aside with God. Mm -hmm. In your own home, it has to be conducive where God can show up. And you can experience God. Cain and Abel had a place to worship because they brought their offerings. They brought their sacrifice. We are to bring in the house of the Lord our sacrifices. And we earlier in the year, you can go back and look at this message, we talk about sacrifices. It's not able to do it this morning. But we are offered to the Lord the sacrifices of our lips. Our praise. We are to show up ready to give God praise. We are to show up ready to give God thanks. And we talked about, when we talk about sacrifice, never come to the point where you think it's too much for God. Are you with me? If the Lord says to you, prompting your spirit to say, get up and run. Get up and run. Because he is about to do something for you. Sometimes we, we think it is too much. We think that I need to give God what I feel like, not what he's asking of me. I don't want to get ahead of myself because we can look at that in a while. So we see they brought, both of them brought their offerings, which means there was a place. So we see there was a place, there was a time for worship. Look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 3. Genesis chapter 4. It says, in the course of time, literally means at the end of days, that is at the end of a certain period of time. It, and I have said, as you begin to look in the text and we understand who God is, God is not a God of disorder. There is pattern and order for God. So it means somewhere along the, in, the, in, in the history of of these boys' parents, God had revealed to them how to worship, where to worship, are you with me, and a time to worship. When we know how to worship, where to worship, and a time to worship, how many, how many of us know there's no longer any excuses? We will be judged on that basis because we see later on in, in, in scripture there's prescribed places and times of worshipping the fact that Cain and Abel came to sacrifice at the same time also suggests that God had a specific and particular time the scripture says that they both came 
and offer the sacrifices to God. Which also tells us there could be a day or a way of worshiping. A way. There's a certain prescribed way of worshiping. Sometimes in we worship based on our feelings. If it makes us feel good, then we think it must make God makes God feel good. <laughs> That's not necessarily the case, you know, folks. God has a specific prescribed way in which he wants us to worship him. And I mean, we could, be, we could come in here for corporate worship and we could have a great time. You feel good and go home and God just say, eh. It was not acceptable worship. You felt good, but that's not what I ask. Because in our minds, we many times have a way of what we think God Desire, but how must know that God, what God desire is revealed in His Word. As I was preparing this message with the prevalence of YouTube right now and social media, I mean, you can see the, the prevalence of foolishness where God says, Do this. It's not in scripture, but it makes them feel good. I mean, I don't want to start listing examples. You've you probably seen them more than I have seen them. And I think if it's not in the pattern of the word of God, be wary. Of. It has to be in the word. We see the way of worship is significant. The first act of worship is right here in sacrifice. It was a sin offering, a supreme act of worship. We saw Abraham sacrifice to God. And through Moses came the, the demand of the ritual sacrifice of the old covenant. The heart of the new covenant is Jesus' perfect once and for all sacrifice on the cross. So we must come to the conclusion that Cain and Abel did not accidentally stumble upon this. This was not an accident. Oops. We have stumbled upon this. No, I believe the word of God was clear on this. With them, I believe also from their parents. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 tells us, Since faith cometh by hearing, Abel and Cain must have had some revelation on which faith is based. Are you hearing me? If faith comes by hearing, both of them must have had a level of revelation. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing that? Because you can leave here this morning and go home but the level of your revelation will make no difference because you didn't hear you only hear certain things but if you open your spirit and be attuned to the word of God you can hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying to you and when you leave here you can begin to act now on what you have heard so both Cain and Abel, they had a level of revelation based on their hearing. But when the time come to offer their sacrifice, we saw how each of them approached it. When we look at the text in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 to 10, in talking about Cain and Abel. And then we look in scripture, we have to come to a conclusion. There is nothing instinctively wrong with offering grain or fruit or vegetable. Because we see later in scripture, that was received. But these are 
according to the biblical pattern for the offering of sin, it had to be a lamb. Are you with me? How do we, how do we know that? We look in scripture. We saw that Abel offered a lamb for the, for, for, for the sin of one man. Then we see in scripture, Moses came and he offered a lamb for the sins of the people based on the high priest. But then we see that on the day of atonement, they offered a lamb for the sin of the entire nation of Israel. And thank God, we just celebrated our resurrection weekend. We know Jesus Christ, who is the lamb of God, he offered himself for the sins of the entire world. Hallelujah. My friends, you got to understand, when Abel did what God said, he revealed his obedience and acknowledgement of his sinfulness. Cain, on the other hand, was disobedient and he did not acknowledge his sin. Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain because God had prescribed a blood sacrifice. Somehow, Abel knew what God wanted. Cain refused to give what God wanted. That is the reason why the Bible says Abel offered a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain and it was received. You see, when we look at both of these brothers, Abel gave what God wanted, but Cain gave what he wanted. Are you hearing me? Abel gave what God wanted, but Cain gave what he wanted. I want you to listen to this because faith cometh by which is better to do to give what we want or to give what God wants it is always better for our lives if we give what God wants is it always easy no but it is always more acceptable. It is always more acceptable when we give what God wants. Praise God. Touch your neighbor and say, give what God wants. Tell somebody, don't give what you want. How does God want us to approach when we give? We had approached God on the basis of we are giving him what he wants. If we remember we be, where we began, both of them worship, you know. Both of them approach God to worship. But one approach on the basis of God, what you want is what I'll give you. Cain approached on the basis of, I'm coming to worship, but I'm going to give you what I want. I want to warn us this morning, because sometimes we have become so callous in our worship. We have to pick up the attitude, God, here it is. Take it or leave it. We have picked up the attitude where, God, why are you asking so much of me? But can I tell you this morning, if God asks you to worship in a prescribed way, it's because he knows what's best for you. He knows what's best for you. When we look at these, both of these men, 
I am thinking of Abel breaking the tradition of his parents. But Cain continuing the tradition of his parents. Abel did according to what God says. And he was accepted of it. The passage we read this morning, it says even today, his gift is still testifying of him. The tradition Cain followed is that what it is. Um, his, their parents, Adam and Eve, they disobeyed what God said and brought death on the entire human race. It's interesting when we read, if you go back and you read Genesis chapter 4, we'll see that at, at this moment that the Bible says that Abel got up and he left the presence of God. My friends, there is a connection in disobedience that will cause you to get up and leave the presence of God. There is a connection in how we worship. Worship will draw you either closer to God or if you fail to offer the proper worship, you may be doing it for weeks after weeks, month after month, year after year, and you, you're not seeing any result in your life. And you're asking why. But God says you got to worship according to my instruction. Tell somebody, worship according to the pattern. When we look at Cain, it is a... Let me ask the question of the text. There are some things that stood out to me. Cain, he had some knowledge of what God required, you know. He had some knowledge, but he decided to worship in his own way. Come on now, folks. Proverbs warns us there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is the way of death. Cain had some knowledge. If you know what to do, do it. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, it is sin. Cain believed in God. Otherwise, he would not have brought a sacrifice. Are you hearing me? He believed in God. Otherwise, why would he come to worship? Why would he bring a sacrifice? He acknowledged a supreme being. And he, he recognized I owe him some type of worship. That's why he came. He recognized God, but he did not obey God. Are you hearing me? He believed in God, but he did not believe God. Are you hearing me? All the Sunday worshipers. You know what they do, Bishop? They believe God. They believe in God, you know. But they do not believe in God come Monday morning. I believe God to the extent I can show up, I can watch online, I can participate in the service, but I don't live my life by the tenets of this word. He thought he could approach God in whatever way he wanted and expected God to be impressed and be satisfied. Mm -mm. My folks, Bishop Lovelace could be impressed by your worship. But can I tell you this morning, it's not me you should try to impress. <laughs> <laughs> you got to impress God himself. Because I may tell you, oh, fantastic. But what does God say? 
God says, when I look at your worship, when it comes up to me, it is not authentic. Hmm. When your worship comes up to me, it is counterfeit. It comes up as strange fire. Mm. False religion is trying to come to God by any other way than the way God prescribed. Remember the sons of, two older sons of Aaron? They decided to go before God to offer up the sacrifices before God. Strange fire. God was not impressed with that. Well, thank God for grace today. <laughs> uh, as soon as they offered up that sacrifice, oops. Thank God for grace today. We can get away with some stuff. I mean, otherwise, none of us will be here this morning. Thank God for his grace. But let us not frustrate the grace of Almighty God. Let us not frustrate the grace of God because it is false religion trying to come to God simply on a basis of what I feel. What I think God should get. No, we want to give God what belongs to him. I quoted this verse already, Proverbs 14, 12. Let me quote it again. There is a way which seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Cain failed to acknowledge his sin and refused to obey God by bringing the sacrifice God did not require. He did not mind worshiping God as long as it was on his own terms in his own way and God rejected his sacrifice watch this and God also rejected him Genesis 4 16 Cain went out from the presence of the Lord into a life of continual self-will which the heart is worldliness and unbelief you if you go into I think it's Jude chapter and in, no, sorry, in, in the book of Jude, verse 11, in the book of Jude, verse 11, it says that the world has gone the way of Cain. Think about it. The way of Cain, there is a way. And we are living in that time right now. The way of Cain is one where man wants to do their own thing. Live by their own standard. Worship according to their own pattern and own desires. My friends, are you feeling sorry for Cain this morning? No. We should not feel sorry for him because he knew what God wanted, but he refused. God says, woe to them. For they have gone the way of Cain. God help us this morning. That our worship will be acceptable to God. Hallelujah. God wants our worship to be acceptable to him. Touch your neighbor and say, let your worship be acceptable to God. True worship causes us to be a witness and fishers of men. When we speak of worship, we are talking about something only believers can do. I know any man can praise God, but it's only believers can really worship God. <laughs> are you hearing me? And sometimes that's where we miss 
understand what's happening. So I mean, we can go to a, a, a hall and it's filled with people. I mean, the best worship band is on stage. And I, I mean, the place is, is hopping. And we think worship is happening. It may not necessarily be worship, but people are praising. You may have all, I mean, the believer, the unbeliever can get up. And the hands swinging in the air, their hips are moving from side to side, and they are singing and they are celebrating. This is not worship. They're simply praising. I mean, the stones, nature, everything can praise. But worship is only reserved for the believer. Are you in that category today? Worship is reserved for the believers. Worship is from believers to God. We magnify God in worship by expressing our love and commitment to him. Watch this. Unbelievers cannot do this. They can't. When an unbeliever watches genuine worship, watch this, it becomes a powerful witness to them. What happened on the, in Acts chapter 2? On the day of Pentecost, when the, the, the church in, in the book of Acts began to worship God and it spilled out into the streets. The Bible said they are amazed. And how many souls God saved that day? 3,000 souls. God say. You know what worship will tell us? Worship brings God's presence to reality. When in a worship, you, you will sense the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. When, when, when the presence of God, it's more than a goosebump feeling. You need to hear me on this. Because, you know, have you ever gone somewhere and the, the atmosphere is electrifying and it makes you, your body feel so? You look at your hands and you see goosebumps. It doesn't mean that God is there. I mean, man can tap into your soul. You, you need to know that. A man can tap into your soul and get you to move when you thought you could never move. Oh, come on now. You got to be more, you're, you're much, much your church here at Progress. A man can say things and do things that will cause you to believe, wow. It doesn't mean that God is operating. But when we talk about worship is where it comes from the heart. And you're recognizing, God, how can I honor you? Praise God. I'm thinking in Isaiah chapter 6 from verse 1 to 8. Yeah, let me read this. I, I have it in my notes. So I want to read it. It says, in the year that King Uzziah died. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted, and train filled the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with and with two he covered his feet, and with two he fly he flew. And one cried to the other and said, "Holy." holy holy is the lord of hosts the whole earth is filled with his glory and the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke so i said woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of uncleanness for my eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts then one of the seraphim flew to me, having his hand on a live coal, and he's taken with the tongues from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then I said, Here am I. Send me. My friend, true worship causes us to be a witness. Abel is dead, but what he did is still a witness today. Are you hearing me? Acceptable worship means that the presence of God is felt, watch this, 
God's pardon is offered, God's purpose is revealed, and God's power is displayed. That's what true worship, acceptable worship, my friend, need to have a profound impact on the unbeliever when they see you and I worshiping. How do we worship like Abel? Let me close with this. Genesis 4, verse 2 to 5. Let me read that. Genesis 4, 2 to 5. Now, Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. I remember as a kid growing up in, in church and you go to, to Sunday school and uh, these passages of scripture, I, hearing the older folks argue over this passage of scripture and felt, you would hear some people felt that God, it seemed like God was unjust here. If Abel was a keeper of sheep, he gave what he did. If Cain was a tiller of the ground, he gave what he did. But as you begin to really get into scripture and understand the text and context of scripture, you realize God was not asking them to do something that they were not able to do. God has a prescribed order. Sometimes we always look for the easy way out. It said, in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock of, um, and of their fat. That's a whole different um, passage there, a whole different message there, rather. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain and his offering. When we read that in context of Romans chapter 2, verse 11, what does it say? God does not show favoritism. I always know that. God is no respecter of man. If you do good, <laughs> you accept it. If you do evil, you will be rejected. Are you hearing me? So we see Abel by faith offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. By faith, it means that Abel believe in God. He believed what God says and he was committed to being obedient to God. Are you hearing me? We see in, in the scripture in Romans chapter 10 verse 17 say, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of almighty God. We need to hear God's word. Don't miss what God has to say to you and what God needs to do in your life because you, you have become dull of hearing. Ask your neighbor, how is your hearing this morning? To worship like Abel means to worship God by faith. Praise God. Never let your worship become vain, worthless, empty as Matthew 15 warns us if a worship is based on the commandment of men rather than the commandment of God it is empty it is worthless are you hearing me what God seeks according to John chapter 4 verse 23 he is looking for true worshipers verse 24 tells us he are looking for true worshipers who will worship him how in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. When we look at the New Testament, there are ways in the New Testament it reveals how we are to worship. Acts chapter 2 verse 42. And they continually steadfastly in the apostle doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Tell anybody but listen carefully. Acts chapter 20 verse 17. Now on the first day of the week when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued his message. How long? Until midnight. There's a way to worship. 
Acts 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22 to 26, it says, For I received of the Lord that which also I delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood. This do. As often as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he come. There is a way to worship. First Corinthians chapter 16 verse 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection of the saints, as I have given orders to the churches in Galatia, so you must do also on the first day of the week. Let each of you Lay aside something, storing up that he may prosper, that there be no collection when I come. There's a way to worship. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 and 17, he said, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual song, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever, somebody say whatever. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all. How? In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God, the Father through him. There is a way to worship progress. I mean, men may have all the different strategies. And you may feel good. Are you hearing me? You may even go home saying, wow, what a garden of worship we had today. But you know what we should always ask? Was it acceptable? Did the Lord accept it? Did we give God our best? Or we just throw something together and say, here you go God. What else do you want? We are to give God our best. Give God our best. Give God our best showing up on time. We might as well talk about it. If you go into court, you're not going to show up to court late. If, you sh if, you go in, you know, if you're going somewhere for a job and they say the interview is at 10 o'clock, I guarantee you are there at 9.45. Give God your best. Give God your best. Stay awake in church. There's a way to worship. You've heard my story. I, I don't want to get sidetracked. The last time I slept in church was 1985. 1985. I was at a youth camp. And I slept. The message the preacher was preaching that night. God wants a man to stand in the gap. I slept halfway through the message. At the end of the message, several people came up and said, did you hear that message? That was for you. The pastor died the next day coming back to the youth camp in a vehicle accident. His last message was, God wants a man to stand in a gap. And I slept through it from that day. <laughs> I can never sleep in church again. <laughs> doesn't matter how much drink some water have a candy but stay awake stay awake there's a way to worship you show up you participate there's a way to worship I don't need to tell you to lift your hands there's a way to worship are you hearing me I don't tell you to show up ready to read the word there's a way to worship I don't need to tell you to come with, with an offering. There's a way to worship. Ready to give unto the Lord faithfully. There is a way to worship. When you worship like Abel, it may cost you your life. Did you get that? You know it cost him his life. When God rejected Cain's offering, he got so angry. He... he you know how, what he reacted? By killing his brother. We already, we see the heart. He came to worship, but the heart was not there. Don't approach God 
you know, with a filthy heart. And say, God, here, my friend, he doesn't, he's under no obligation to receive it from you. Will you stand with me? I want to encourage us this morning as we look at Hebrews 4, 11 verse 4. This is the latter part of what this is. And through it, he being dead still speaks. Live a life beyond yourself. Live a life of a worshiper. Through your worship, there will be a witness that will live on throughout the years. Abel's faith still speaks to us even today as we examine his life. I want you to know our spiritual, our choices that we make greatly impact those who will come after us. What is your witness to this church? What witness are you leaving this congregation? Will you remember it for your work of faithfulness? Will you have been someone who made an impact with others? Can it be said that you are a person who is hospitable, helpful, and always ready to look out, how can I be a blessing to the unbeliever? when they come into our midst. Are you having an impact? The Bible says, God testified of Abel. Can God commend you as righteous? Days away, my friend. Don't be so... Now, understand. True worship is noticed. True worship can be identified. Are you with me? True worship can be identified because there's a pattern to it. God is a God of pattern. So you can identify true worship when you see it. And you can know whether this is true worship or this is just a counterfeit. to ask yourself this morning am I trying to impress man or do I want to be acceptable to God in this moment is you and God will you just lift your hands before him right now those of home will you join us this morning as we are talking about true worship the worship of faith it is you and God in this moment will you talk to him ask him right now will you ask him right now join us in the sanctuary join us at home and wherever you are in this morning and say God hear my cry this morning let my wish be acceptable to you father we come Lord not not in, in pretense we come Lord not in our own minds but we come father humbly before you that our worship will be acceptable we come father with our heart a, a motive oh God that is pure that is undefiled we come and we say here I am to worship you here I am before you Lord God to honor you and to recognize you that Father it's our desire that our worship will be acceptable to you Lord wherever we have offered to you strange fires whatever we have offered worship that's unacceptable we ask you to be merciful and to forgive us uh, in the name of Jesus uh, and I pray Father and God let it be a rising in this place uh, let it be a lifting even this place uh, in the name of Jesus uh, that God you can be pleased pleased of uh, that you can receive uh, that is honorable before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray Father in this moment uh, as we lift our hands, uh, as we open our mouths uh, and we cry holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Uh, we pray Father fill this place God. Let us experience uh, the very presence of God. Let it be felt. Uh, let it be tangible this morning. Uh, let the victory come to lies, uh, sickness I heal, uh, deliverance are brought through, souls are saved uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh God, manifest yourself uh, in this place today, God. Uh, pour out your spirit uh, afresh on us, God. Increase our faith, Lord. God, even in our worship at times, Lord. 
we don't want to stretch ourselves. We don't want to stretch ourselves, Lord. But I pray this morning in the name of Jesus, you, we will so, so, so surrender ourselves to you, Lord, and say, here we are. Stretch us this morning. Stretch us, Father, in every area of our life that our worship can be acceptable to you. We don't want to give you, oh God, what we think you, you deserve, but we want to give you what you ask this morning. You ask of us to show up uh, to the place of worship. You ask of us to come ready to worship. You ask of us this morning, uh, come ready to offer to you what is best this morning. So we come this morning, Lord. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Come and pray this morning. Pray for the victory. Pray for God to change every heart this morning. In the name of Jesus. Come and pray this morning. Change your hearts, God. Change your hearts today, God. A heart that is acceptable to you. A heart that loves you, God. With all of our heart, we love you, Lord God. With our mind, our soul, our spirit, we love you this morning, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, God. We come this morning because we recognize we need you, Jesus. We need you, God. Father and God, we don't want to go the way of Cain this morning. For you declare woe unto those who follow the way of Cain. Father, it's not our portion. We don't desire it in the name of Jesus. For Father, it's by it the elders, the renowned men of old, receive a good report. It is the faith that we need this morning. It is your faith. It is the faith, God. So we ask of you to stay, God, in the name of Jesus. May we rise this morning in our faith. Oh, God, may we lay aside today, God, the distraction. We put it aside, Lord, and we come as true worshipers. May we have the experience as Isaiah. Oh, God. He said, yeah, my Lord, send me. For he had an encounter with you, Lord. Will you join hands with somebody and begin to pray for that person this morning? Just join hands with someone, with your neighbor. Just join hands and begin to pray for that person whose hand you're holding. Those who are joining us online, if you're in your home and you have someone in your home, pray with that person. If you're by yourself, will you pray? Just pray. Pray in this moment. I hear the Lord saying, pray. Pray in this moment. I hear the Lord calling us to recognize in this season. Hallelujah. He's calling us to press in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We need you, Lord Jesus. We need, we need you. We need you. We need a release today. We need the appointment of your spirit. We need, Father, an encounter like never before. Hallelujah. I pray, Father, and God, you will fill this house, oh God, ever with praise and worship that is acceptable to you, Father. That this house will be called a house of prayer, oh God in the name of Jesus. Oh, that our worship, hallelujah, everything that we do, that we'll do it all unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We will bring, oh God, ourselves, our body, oh Father and God, our resources, our time, we'll give it to you this morning without reservation. We'll give it to you this morning, God, in the name of Jesus, recognizing you deserve it all, God. You deserve it all. You deserve it all. We're not giving it to men. The church is not giving it to Pastor Lovelace, but they are giving it to you this morning. So, Father, we give you the best. We give you the best this morning in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. We need you, Father. We need victory on all sides. We need new hearts, new mindsets. Change us this morning. Change us. May we worship like Abel this morning. May we worship like Abel. We don't want to go the way of Cain today, Father. We reject that way. We walk away from that, Father and God. Father, our desire is only to please you. Our desire is only to impress you. Our desire is that where we can hear you say, Well done, good and faithful servant. 
heaven or desire is where you are pleased with our worship God yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord Lord. let our worship let our worship come to you acceptably today God let our worship be authentic before you, God. So touch our hearts this morning, God. Touch our hearts today, Father. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, where our hearts have not been right, wash us this morning. Where our hearts, Father, and God, our motives have not been right, wash us, Father, today. In the name of Jesus. Hear us, God. Hear us, God. Hear us, God. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes, God, hallelujah. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes, my worship. Yes, my worship.
heard. For your word declare faith comes by hearing. And hearing the word of the Lord. We have heard today there is an acceptable worship. And there is an unacceptable worship. We purpose today to always offer to you worship that is acceptable to you. Thank you for your faithfulness to us one more time in sending your word to change us, to heal us, and to guide us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Do you purpose to always to offer acceptable worship to the Lord? Amen. 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 It's my desire to always be authentic to the Lord. Amen. I want to remind you that we are meeting on Wednesday. This coming Wednesday is our Bible study. Amen. And our prayer, prayer Bible study. So come early. Come in. Let us begin to pray on Wednesday. Amen. On Saturday, we relaunch our outreach community outreach campaign on Saturday coming but this coming Saturday it will be the training so we invite as many if you come out let's begin to train as we get ready for a spring um, drive our goal this year is to touch 1,000 homes amen we are able we are able to do it amen so we encourage you come out on Saturday at, at Elipus 10 o'clock 10 o'clock 10 o'clock on Saturday right here also um, if you desire um, membership uh, meet us here on Saturday after the outreach we'll have our membership um, class right here amen praise God so today is the faces anniversary <laughs> you mean and, and it's today oh and Mike you didn't take you away this weekend Oh, you, oh you have, you have, you have, Mike, you have plans. Can we just honor them this morning? Amen. I was at the wedding. That's like 30, 34 years ago. Amen. 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 Bless God. Thank God for the lives. Amen. Praise God. We love you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace from this time forth and forevermore. Love on somebody. Have a wonderful Sunday in the Lord. <laughs>